Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are so excited that you've joined us today. We have an awesome demo in store for you. Uh, just going to give everyone about two moments to filter in, and then we will get started. If you are just now entering, welcome. We are just going to give everybody one more minute to filter in uh, and then we will get going. All right, looks like we are ready to begin. Uh, again, welcome, really excited to uh, have this demo today. Just a reminder, if you have any questions uh, that pop into your head during the presentation, please feel free to drop those in the question box on the right-hand side on your control panel, um, and we will get those answered for you at the end um, of the presentation. But um, at this point, I am going to turn it over to our presenter, Joe. Thank you for that, Madison, and thank you all for joining us here today. Um, taking a look at this, yeah, we're looking at Ready and Flex. So guess what? If you're here, you're getting a two-for-one special because I'm going to be doing two demos today, one for our Ready product and the other one for our Flex product. Uh, it's a quick agenda. Here's what we're going to be going through today, a quick intro as to who I am if you haven't seen or heard my voice before. Uh, a quick overview of who Attack IQ is, what do we do here, then talk about Attack IQ Ready, Attack IQ Flex, and I'm going to be doing demos of each one of them, and then of course we'll take some questions at the end. Who am I? I'm Joe Mastromarino. I handle sales engineering for the East over here at Attack IQ. I've been here just over two years and nearly 20 years in the, uh, in the technology industry overall. Uh, this is absolutely a, a couple of products that I am super excited about, uh, especially Flex is going to be our, our, our newest one that we're going to be talking about. So really excited to be bringing these uh, to you here today, especially if this is something that you haven't seen before. Or an overview of who Attack IQ is, uh, thank you Gartner, they have placed us in this uh, breach and attack simulation, as, uh, as they would call it. And we absolutely develop a best of breed, and we call this a continuous security validation. Uh, because what we're doing is we're constantly helping you test all of those security controls that you have in place. So in other words, all of those controls that you've spent millions of dollars uh, acquiring, maintaining, uh, keeping them up, do they do what they say on the tin and are they properly configured to do what you want to do? Uh, we've been doing this for over 10 years now, so we have lots and lots of experience in this part of the industry. Uh, so we've been delivering these types of solutions, especially to large organizations, although a running theme that you're going to see, especially with these products, is that we are making this type of testing accessible to everyone. Regardless of wanting you want to be able to do this kind of ad hoc and just for a couple of machines or one or two machines here, or you need a managed, uh, it's essentially a managed service that's going to help you with that, this managed testing, as we would be doing with Attack IQ Ready, we're going to be helping you do that with those different product lines. And of course, all of this is aligned with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, as Attack IQ is one of the four founding research partners of the MITRE Ingenuity Center for Threat Informed Defense. So we've been helping with those research projects over the years, especially with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So we have that ingrained into the DNA of this company and everything that we do here. Another massive benefit as an Attack IQ customer is that you get the Attack IQ adversary research team backing all of the content that you'll be using. These are a couple of the different blog posts that we've had from our adversary research team. Think logging, security, incident responders, 
uh, uh, malware reverse engineers, cyber threat intelligence experts, all the types of people that you want pulling apart all of this information and then synthesizing it into things that you can use. You don't have to do that work. We've done that heavy lifting for you and made it something actionable that you can use across all of our product lines. Let's start with Attack IQ Ready, Breach and Attack Simulation as a Service. And you'll see that testing for everyone theme that I, I really love. And what this is going to be doing is it's going to help you with you don't have the resources to run all of these tests on a regular basis. So let us do that heavy lifting for you. You can use this nearly instantly. You set up the platform. There's one agent that you can install. You can install more if you want, uh, but usually you'll just start with one and then we'll use that to run our weekly testing inside of your environment monthly curating all of that uh, all of that types of testing that we're going to be doing we're going to run testing against all of those different controls that you have you can name them out in the platform we'll give you that reporting every week so, and you can also see your progress week over week and then be able to tell are we doing better or are we slipping away from where we need to be after uh, after about six months a couple of quarters we'll also work with you on detection engineering because we're gonna help you through this like a project. You wanna crawl, walk, run, fly. Let's start with what you can stop first and go there and then help you with those actions. Then afterwards, you can start moving into the detection engineering. If you have a SIM, if you have something like that where you can pull in those types of detections, let's help you work it from there. And then of course, giving you analyses of all of those things that we're doing within the platform. What are we testing out of the box here with Ready? Uh, your endpoint antivirus, your endpoint uh, detection and response, your EDRs, your firewalls, your web content filters, your web application firewalls, your email filters. We do this with one agent that's already sitting inside of your environment, that one that you install. And then we'll also have another one that's hosted outside that can help with a lot of those things for the next gen firewall because we can do some packet capture replays between them. Uh, with the web application firewalls, we can also run a series of attacks that are mapped back to things like not only MITRE attack, but also OWASP. So trying to run some, uh, some types of web-facing server attacks that we can run against those and see how you fare against those. And those email filters as well. Let's try to send you some malicious looking emails and see how you fare against those. The reports, what are you gonna see out of this? Because ultimately this is what you want from this type of offering is that you want these reports that are going to come in weekly and not only give you some nice infographics, but also give you these types of mitigations uh, uh, and uh, recommendations and mitigations, things that you can do to answer that, as I always like to call it the proverbial, so what? So you found this thing, what are you going to do about it? We'll give you all of those different types of things that you should do in order to raise, you see that prevention effectiveness score right there in the middle, you see that uh, that radar graph over there for your prevention rates. How do you get those higher? We're gonna tell you how with each of those reports. So that's enough talk. Let's see this thing in action. I wanna show you what Ready looks like. I'm gonna shift my screen over just once right here. Let me go right over to my Ready portal. Uh, and what's gonna happen right here is you get met with this screen right here. So you go to you go to your home portal right over here and it's gonna show you right at the beginning, here's some of the latest, uh, some of the latest research that we have here in the platform. And it's super easy to get this thing set up because you have this configuration it's right over here. There's only a couple of things that you need. So your security control stack, I'll take a look at this, I'll configure this. And this is what I was mentioning before, the different types of capabilities that you have. Okay, I have all of my network and endpoint security controls that are here, I can name these out. I can select them and make sure that they're included in my testing. Go back home here for a second. I can also then take a look inside of my configuration. Uh, where are my test points? My test points are right over here. And the schedule, when is this supposed to run? This is supposed to run on a weekly basis. So this will continue to run right here. I can take a look at this and it, it is going to run weekly. It's a matter of when do I run this during the week? I choose to run this on Mondays and this is gonna run, it looks like 1.20 p.m. in UTC. So very easy for you to get that schedule. And that's all you really had to do was to get that set up, get your, uh, get your test points configured. You can download, install one of those and off you go. Uh, so once you have that, then you can take a look over here and grab your reports. 
Uh, so when I take a look at the reports, I'm going to get these on a weekly basis. So here's my, my weekly summary. I could just go ahead and grab that report. Uh, and then once I grab that report, just go ahead and click that view button right there. It already downloaded the report for me. And now I can go and take a look at that. So really, it seemed really fast because it was. I set my security control stack. I set my test points. So here I have two inside of my environment. Um, and we give you instructions on exactly how to install those. And I said, when? That was all I had to do. Now Attack IQ does the rest and sends me the reports so that I can know what I need to do next. So let me go hop over into my Attack IQ Ready report that I would get right here. I had a couple of different controls that were tested here, my email inspection, my web application firewall, my EDR, and my endpoint antivirus. When was this report generated? Yep, we just, re we just generated this report this week. We really are uh, here showing you the, the outcomes, and I'll make this a little bit less of an eye chart for you. Um, looking at this, the executive summary is always going to come in here. We're going to start high level, give you the executive summary, and we're also going to give you, hey, here's that gas gauge that I was showing you before. So I'm able to see that I had my effectiveness score of 66. We are also doing a benchmark across everyone else that's doing this exact same testing. So in case you get the question of, well, how are we doing in comparison with everyone else that's doing this? Well, we're just a little bit above the average, but we can certainly do a lot better. There's a lot more we can do here. Uh, so we'll also show you the scope of that, how many of these tests that we ran uh, on how many of these endpoints were we doing this? Let's show you again some more of those uh, some more of those graphs that you had. So like this radar graph that you see over here broken out by the different controls that you have. My AV is clearly doing very well. My email is doing okay. My EDR is doing a little bit less than okay. And my web application firewall clearly needs a lot of work. Uh, this will also help you map back for each of these tests what was uh, what was not prevented, what was prevented. And then as we move further down, we'll also show in the prevention capability how this gets mapped back to the MITRE ATT&CK framework using one of these heat maps that you see right here. How often were these things not prevented versus prevented? And now we can also see, because I did mention that, yes, you can look at this over time. There is a graph right here that's going to show you control by control whatever you're testing, how are we doing? Well, clearly our AV is rock solid for all of these tests week over week. Email, we're starting to see a little bit of an improvement here. EDR is starting to slip a little bit. Maybe there was a policy change somewhere around the beginning, middle of August that we need to take a look at. My next gen firewall again does okay, but then for some reason we're not testing that and we wanna see why. And then web application firewall is a fairly new add to this test and we have a lot of work to do here. What are some strategic recommendations? Because we also go to give you some recommendations here for things that uh, will come in common for a lot of the things that we found that were not prevented. So showing you a lot of those running themes is really important. Um, also important really for any kind of test that you're doing is what was the methodology? What were you thinking? What were you going through as you ran these tests? So we explain this in every single one of these reports. So just in case anybody ever wanted to come back and say, well, how is this report structured? How is it run? Uh, how do we set this thing up? We give you all of that information right here inside of the report. What was the controls inventory? What were we testing? All of that uh, laid out right here. Some of our initial baseline testing. And then we do also show you for each of these tests, we'll give you a better explanation as you go through it of what were the different categories for each of the tests that we ran for, in this case, the antivirus test suite, and what was the rationale, a little bit more detail about what this category, this type of test will contain. And we do this for every one of the, uh, every one of the different types of control tests that we're doing. So these are all here. I'm just scrolling a little bit fast so we can get through it here. And then, of course, the findings. We had some of those summary results up above, and then we get further into detail down here. So now I can see control by control, how are we performing? Uh, this, of course, follows with the AV still doing really, really well. And then my EDR email and WAF definitely needing some attention. The WAF uh, absolutely needing some attention here. Um, it's also going to go here test by test, scenario by scenario, asset by asset you'll be able to see all the different things that we were doing here and uh, what may have been prevented, what was not. It's gonna give you a detail of what each and every single one of these scenarios was. Uh, so you know exactly what was happening through all of these. And then when we go through our recommendations and mitigations, 
the other thing that it is going to do is for each and every one of these scenarios that are here, it's going to tell you, hey, this is the scenario that we were running. This is the test point on which it ran. We have some recommendations for you. There are also some MITRE recommendations for you. Uh, so there's recommendations from a couple of different perspectives for every single one of these scenarios that comes in. And this is the type of reporting that you're going to be getting on a weekly basis. So you now have all of that summary information for everyone that you need to communicate, especially if you're communicating upwards and say, this is how our program is doing overall. And then you have all of the lower level details right here for any of the other people that need to be uh, helping out with changing policies uh, and really just going, going through and, and moving all the knobs and switches and making all of these things uh, uh, properly configured so that you can stop all of the different types of attacks that we're running here. And you think now you're going to get this every single week. So you have a, a plethora of information that you can work through for all of these different things. This is all part of the ready service. And this will just continue to go on. You have lots and lots of results here. This is inside of an environment that naturally has a lot of stuff that we want to be able to find. Uh, so this is a great example of the regular ready report. This was run on real machines with some controls there. So yes, this is about as close to reality as we can get uh, and also have some stuff that we can find to make sure that we can get those mitigation recommendations in there. So that is ready in a nutshell. Easy to explain, easy to go through, easy to install, and then easy to get the results. That is another example of testing for everyone. So that's ready. The next thing that I'm going to talk about, and now I'm going to move back over to my move back over to my slides here, is we're going to talk about flex. And flex is going to look a little similar, but it's going to be very different. So this is much more a on-demand agent list. Agent list test as a service. So you just want to run something really quickly. That's what flex is here for. You don't want to install an agent. That's what flex is here for. Let's talk about how that works. So this is an on-demand, you pay as you go. Agent lists, th this is a way of running these same types of attacks completely as a service. So we're still using that same type of, remember that adversary research team that I mentioned earlier? We're using that same research. We're using the same types of uh, software that we would use in the agent and all of those different attack scenarios. But it's only going to run on demand. That's it. You don't have to install anything. It's just going to run. And I'll show you that as well. And these tests are going to be priced at a, what's essentially a fraction of a manual red team test. This is really, really simple, intuitive. We're going to walk through the entire flow as I do the demonstration. Let me walk you through a use case of why something like this would be extremely useful. Uh, use case I've, I've thought of before and, and, and other people as well is that you may be going through something like uh, like an M&A type activity, merger and acquisition, you're bringing, or you're bringing in or working with some other organization that you, you need to fold these networks together and you need to quickly determine the security of those networks before you can bring them on. Now, in a situation like this, you may have to contract out to a red team or, or, or uh, uh, do some type of penetration test with someone outside or inside you need to scope out what that is going to look like, do a controls audit, then figure out where those gaps might be, uh, figure out where you want to test, what you want to test, source all of the personnel, make sure you can get the resources, agree on the rules of engagement, <clears throat> uh, come up with all the tests that are going to be run, schedule this, when is this going to run, do the tabletop, actually run all of the things that you're going to have to run, and then get back all of the results from that, and then uh, process that, put it into a report, somebody has to write that, then we have to communicate it. The point I'm getting to is this could take weeks worth of time to be able to do this type of testing. But if you introduce something like Flex, this can really collapse that timeline because what you can now do is you can take a series of those tests and we have tests built out to test specific security controls. We'll show that in the demo. We can look at endpoint controls, network controls. We can look at different types of adversary campaigns as well. You select the packages that you want. Even if you don't have direct access to that box inside of that other network, you can direct that other person to either here, take this package or use this link and download it directly from our portal. The package is completely self-contained. It will run everything that it needs to run on the box. And within a couple of minutes, minutes, 
you will have an encrypted payload that you can now bring back to the Flex portal for analysis. That analysis, as soon as you put that in, that takes minutes. So now we've gone from a time frame of weeks to hours to be able to get that information actionable in your hands that you'll be able to say, this is how this organization's controls performed underneath these different types of tests. And these are the things that you need to do in order to rectify those things. So now you have really, really collapsed that timeline and you could do this completely on demand. So some of the features that are here, we have security control baselines for EDR, AV content filtering. This is really stuff that we have out of the box essentially. Performance scoring. So you'd be able to see a, a metric for understanding that performance. And again, similar to the ready, we'll do that. We do that baselining for these types of tests as well. So how well are you performing against the medium? We also have options for threat emulations. So different types of threat actors and campaigns that they have run, you have an option to do that right here in Flex. And then our adversary research team, once again, I keep bringing those people up because man, they're fantastic and they give us a lot of great content. We will continue uh, working with them to keep that content curated right here on the platform for you. And then that remediation guidance. So we'll continue to give you within those reports, the remediation guidance that goes along with any of those attack scenarios. Again, enough talk, let's see it. So this one is, I'm gonna do a couple of extra things with this type of demo here. So now I've moved over to Flex. Flex looks kind of similar to Ready. Uh, so what happens here is that there's no more agents to have to worry about. Let's go through what a basic Attack IQ Flex workflow looks like. So as soon as I get into the portal, it looks exactly like this and I get this getting started window right here. And it reminds us of all of the steps to get success here. I can run assessments in Flex by one, just downloading the packages that I want. I run the packages on the endpoint I want to test. Again, no installation. It just runs right off that box. I then take the output of that file and I bring it back into the Flex portal, and then I can view the report inside of Analyze, and I can use the the um, uh, really the kind of currency that we would use here would be Flex credits. That would be what you would purchase from Attack IQ in order to get the analysis of those reports. That's that's where that comes in, and I'll show you how that workflow goes. So in order for me to get to my packages, I can just go right over here. And here are the different packages that we have available. So this is what I was mentioning earlier, the security baselines of different controls. My content filtering, my endpoint antivirus, my endpoint EDR. I can look from adversary emulations as well. And you'll see this, like especially these graphics on a, on a lot of our marketing, and you'll see all of these different things in here as well. So different types of threat actors and different types of campaigns that they run. One thing to note is that yes, this is our credit system right here. So these security baselines, these are, uh, while they are robust, they are fairly, uh, uh, they're fairly straightforward in what they're doing. So it's really just running a series of these scenarios and that's why these are just one credit per analysis. These adversary emulations have a lot more behind them that go into it and I'll show that in the, in the report as well because this is going through an entire campaign. So these are going to be five credits per analysis. Uh, for each of these. And this we will continue to work on, curate. That's a big charge of our adversary research team is to make sure that this content is uh, uh, curated and uh, absolutely works for, uh, for our customers. So how can I get these packages? Well, one, I could just download the package right from here and it'll immediately download the file onto my machine here. But <clears throat> maybe I have uh, a slightly weaker connection from the machine that I'm sitting on over to the machine where I want to run this. So what I can do is I can just copy a link right over here and it'll get me a link that'll expire shortly. But where am I going to run this? I'm gonna run this. Let me bring you over to another machine that I already have up here and running. I'm gonna bring this right over here. This is another Windows box that I have up and running. And I'm just gonna grab that. I use that link and it immediately downloads the content that I need to run right here. So now let's take this over to the machine where we want to run this. So let's say that this is a machine that I have on some other network that I wanna fold in and I wanna test out their security controls. I have a number of these packages for already here for the sake of the demo here, but I can just use this content filter test that I have right over here. Uh, I can run it. I don't need to install anything. It's just gonna run. And as soon as I click run right there, it is now going to begin the process. It is going to unpack everything that it needs to unpack and then just begin to run through uh, everything that it needs to do. It is going to create one of these output files that you see right here. 
I can then take these output files and bring them back into uh, bring them back into the platform. So this will just continue to run. This will take uh, usually a couple of minutes to run as it goes through its process. Really, really, uh, you don't need to do anything else with it. It's just going to continue to run all on its own. Now, when I have these output files right here, what do we do with them? We're gonna go back over to the platform and I'm gonna to go to my analyze section. And you see, these are all coming from, and this is coming from the same machine, and coming from that same date and time. And I can choose to upload one of these as well. Let me just grab one of those files for you. Uh, this way we can see one of these just kind of coming into the uh, uh, coming into the platform here. So I'll copy one of those files out for you so you can see that uh, that analysis. And let me take, yeah, I have one of these right here. This AV output one is fine. Just grab this one, just so you can see this kind of going into the, uh, the platform here. I want you to see that. So let me go back over to my Flex portal. There we go. So I can choose to either click to upload, I can, or just drag and drop a file here. Even if I had like four or five of these, I could just drag a whole bunch of these over here at the same time, completely fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna take this file right here. That was the one I had and choose to analyze that one. It's just that one file, that's what that analyze one meant. And now this is in progress. So this will take usually about a minute, maybe less to do the analysis. So the system is now analyzing this and it's gonna create a report for me based off of that output that came from all of those tests that we just ran. It'll then show as completed and the view right here is going to show me it, it based on the type of thing that I ran. So remember that from earlier that we have the different baselines as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the the emulation the the attacker campaign emulations. So if I look at this endpoint antivirus one, I can view this for one credit and it'll show me how many credits I have remaining. So it always shows you that. And then as soon as I've spent that X number of credits, I can view that report as many times as I wish. It's really just the analysis of that report is what you would be spending the credits on. And now you can see that report is already done. So I can just click that view one credit, confirm that and boom, there it is. Now I have my report. So let's now take a look at what some of those reports are going to look like since we've gone through the entire workflow. Like that was it, that's all it took. I download the package, put the package where it needs to go, run the package, grab the output, put it here, off we go. Let's take a look at the report. So now I've moved off of my, I've moved off my ready, I'm just gonna close this tab. And now I have this security controls baseline assessment report. Now this is a little bit different. This is an EDR test that I ran here. Uh, same machine, same environment, uh, and similar concepts apply to what we were seeing in Ready. So here in Flex, again, we're gonna have this executive summary. What was the test we ran? When did we run it? What was the type of thing that we ran? And then again, here's our little gas gauge, our effectiveness score. How did we do? And how did we compare against that, that median of other, uh, other tests that have been run here? So we're doing, again, a bit better than average, but we certainly have room to do better. Uh, the, uh, the explanation, the methodology of the testing is really should always be here whenever we have these tests run because we need to make sure that everyone is clear on what type of test we were running, what was the logic behind it, what was the, the source of all of the content that we were using, all of that is right here. What were we doing in this test? Looking at credential harvesting, execution, discovery, and persistence, all of these different types of behaviors that we would expect an EDR to stop and see. Uh, so looking at these different types of uh, these different types of scenarios here, what were you able to stop? Uh, it's now going to go through, and this is the credential access portion. We did pretty well with Mimikatz, Lasagna, GSEC Dump, PW Dump 7. Uh, we probably could have done a little bit better here with Kerber Roasting. So there's a couple of things in here and credentials on the registry script. Uh, these are definitely things that we need to take a look at. And by the way, here's some more mitigation recommendations for this. Let's take a look at that. There's your credentials and registry script. Uh, some attack IQ recommendations and MITRE attack recommendations. So what rules can you put in place to be able to find these things, see these things, stop these things? And then the Kerber roasting as well. So there's some really good and really quick, it was all inside of pages that I was able to see the issues that I had and then what you need to do about it. And that was just one of those tests right there. That was, that was one credit. It immediately showed you what those issues were and ways that you can go ahead and fix those. So that's a tremendous result that comes back. And this just came back in minutes. That's how quick. Let's take a look at one of the adversary emulations. So this is one of the ones here for, uh, this is the Kintsuki uh, campaign from uh, March of 23. 
again, what was the uh, what was the uh, the summary here? What were we looking at? And it looks like we did not prevent this attack. So this one went all the way through, and we're going to have quite a bit of information in here to be able to go through. It does explain what the uh, what the assessment scope was, what were we doing here, and then it goes through. Now these emulations will go through these attacks in a series of stages. Think of these also like the uh, the minor attack tactics. What was the uh, what was the attacker doing? So in this case, we were looking at this initial access and collection. What were we doing here? Uh, it's also going to go through the different stages and see well what were you able to prevent? Were there things that just weren't executed? Um, and you ask why? Well, because these work on a series of what we call these attack graphs. Now, we are also going to tell you at the front, this is again part of that adversary research team, giving you all of the background behind what is this campaign? What are the sources for this? Because we, we will have writings for these things as well and going through all of that research. Here is what we call the attack graph. So to make this a little bit less of an eye chart for you, we're going through each and every one of these attack scenarios here, and we're just applying Boolean logic to what happens between each of these scenarios, depending on whether or not a scenario is prevented, green, not prevented, red, where does it go next? How does it follow through this entire sequence from start to finish? Uh, so that's how we went through this particular attack, and it went through all of these. It's going to explain each of these stages as well show you each of the scenarios, explain the different uh, the different T numbers that we have here in the MITRE ATT&CK framework so you understand not only the, the tactics but also the techniques, if there are any sub-techniques that follow along with those. We will give you all of that information so you understand what was happening here. What scenarios did we execute in a list straight through? What were your results? And yep, we did not stop these. So what, of course, is then going to be, when you take a look at these unprevented steps that are here, uh, what should then be your, uh, your mitigation recommendations? So going through all of these different things right here, uh, same, type, same type of concept applies. We go through all of the different scenarios that are here. We apply our recommendations. We also apply MITRE's recommendations for these. So going through all of these different stages and the scenarios that are there, you saw how fast this came back all of this information, a wealth of uh, these different types of things that you need to do based on whether or not this attacker campaign could have succeeded inside of this environment. And then here are the rules, here are the things that I need to do. I immediately have that actionable intelligence to be able to go back to whoever needs to help me do the work to improve my security posture over time. So that is flex in a nutshell. Now here you have two different, uh, two disparate solutions right here, two different solutions right here, with ready, more of that, uh, uh, more of that service, and then flex being the on-demand. I just need to run something really, really fast, and that's what we can get right here. Um, so this is more of the pay-as-you-go, on-demand, and then the ready is the, the continuous service, but both of these really can work hand-in-hand. Uh, -hand. And that's both of those solutions. And I keep going back to this, this testing for everyone. We have our, our enterprise solution. We demo on this uh, nearly every week. Um, but this Attack IQ Ready, Attack IQ Flex represents testing being accessible to even more people that may have uh, uh, that may have been looking at this and going, well, I don't have the resources for this or, or I don't have the budget for this. That's exactly what this is here for. And uh, you are absolutely the kind of people that we're looking at with uh, with this as well. So we're happy to answer any of those questions that you have on it. Speaking of questions and of learning more about Attack IQ, I will always talk about Attack IQ Academy every time that Madison allows me the opportunity to do so. Um, definitely join up with Attack IQ Academy if you haven't already. It is a free, high quality, instructor-led uh, training set. So you can go sign up, again, completely free. Join over 50,000 other Attack IQ Academy students. Academy.attackiq.com, the link is right there. And uh, these are all not only free classes, but they can also count towards um, uh, if anybody has to do CPEs for any of their any of their certifications. All of those will, uh, will also count towards your CPE credits. So another great, fantastic free resource for the information security community. So it has been my absolute pleasure to uh, present both of these solutions to you today, and I will open it up for any questions that are here in the audience.
Thank you, Joe. Just going to give everybody a moment. If you have a question, please drop it in the box. We will get that answered for you. Not seeing anything at the moment, um, but we will just wait a second. See if sure. anything pops up. Not seeing anything. I think that means you did a fantastic job, Joe. <laughs> I, I will take that stunned silence, but that's completely fine. Again, we are here for any questions that you have. You can take my email address right there off the screen here. Um, we'll make sure you get directed over to whoever you need to talk to. But uh, I'm happy to, about to talk about this stuff all day long, so definitely reach out if you have any questions. And thank you all for your time in Madison for organizing another weekly demo. Thank you all. See you next time.